As a mum, I wasn't neurotic, I wasn't paranoid. I knew that this baby that was weighing six stone, at two years old, shouldn't be weighing six stone. This is Archie Thompson. He's two years old and weighs about six stone, as heavy as an average 11 year old. He's nearly four foot tall and has a 36 inch waist. He can put on as much as one stone in four months, even when he has very little to eat. Archie is growing out of control and it seems there is nothing anyone can do. Hang on, Archie. Thank you. Archie lives by the south coast with his parents, Sarah and Nigel. Oh, he has two older sisters, Are we gonna finish Molly, this? aged four, Are we gonna finish? and Robin, 11. He's half Molly's age, but twice her size. His growth is caused by an extraordinary medical condition doctors know very little about. There have only ever been three other children in the world like him. In the UK, he's one of a kind. Here you go, a bit more. Archie, gonna dig some up? When Archie was born, it was every man's dream to have a boy. It was my dream come true to have a son. I've got two daughters and then have a son, you've got the full set then. Oh, you got some on your hand. And you sort of just think of the future, for when he's older, for playing sports, games, doing father and son things. Where are you going? As I say, it was just every dream come true. And the family was complete then. Come on, Archie, you come this way, well. Being so big spells trouble for Archie. His tiny heart struggles to support his massive frame and he has difficulty breathing. All doctors can say for certain is that if he keeps on growing at such a rapid rate, he may not live for long. Any boats out there? Can you see any boats? It's difficult at times, but Archie is Archie. I wouldn't want him any other way, in many ways. Just sometimes wish that he could leave an ordinary life. Archie was born in January 2002, a normal eight pounds, four ounces. It was a very strange feeling, holding something so small. Archie actually got taken into special care at 24 hours old for not being able to feed and he was in special care for three to four days, I think, um, after which we was allowed to bring him home. He's a clever boy. Everybody was excited. The girls were excited. It was just a great feeling to be able to bring him home. It was um, a day of jubilation, really. After his initial aversion to feeding, Archie was like any other newborn. But then, everything changed. He wasn't a joy to have, because he was screaming non-stop, and sleep deprivation is probably worse than any torture that they could do to anybody. Suddenly, he just went haywire. He was crying all the time. He was drinking all the time. Nothing would settle him. We tried everything, different sleeping positions, different milks. We tried everything, but he just started putting on the weight. He just started ballooning up. Archie began to grow at a phenomenal rate. 
he was putting on roughly a pound a week, or a stone about every four months. By one month, he weighed over 10 pounds. By six months, over 30 pounds. And by his first birthday, three stone nine, the weight of most seven-year-olds. Sarah and Nigel were frightened and at a loss as to what to do. We was probably at our lowest point then. We got to a point of desperation. I spoke to the social worker who gave me the number for the local social services and I rang them with a cry for help. Initially they weren't too keen to help us or didn't know what they could do to help us. Social services wondered if Sarah might be at fault. I didn't know until about two months later that the first thing they did was investigate me for overfeeding of Archie, which, I, looking back on it, I suppose now, they had to do, because I could have been doing that. But it's a bit ironic when I call them for help, they investigate me. Social services had Archie admitted to the local hospital where doctors could monitor how much he was eating. But contrary to their suspicions, what they found was even more disturbing. Not only did Archie eat normally, but he carried on growing at the same explosive rate, regardless of how much or how little he was fed. In Archie's case, we were sure that he wasn't eating very large volumes of food and wasn't terribly interested in food. We, we knew it wasn't purely an intake or appetite problem, but due to his metabolism or the way he actually handles the food that is taken and, and stores it excessively in the body. In Archie, it appeared that his body's mechanisms for dealing with food and the production of fat were malfunctioning badly. Doctors suspected that this might be caused by a genetic disorder, one of the many overgrowth syndromes that have been identified in medicine. But which one? That's when the ball started rolling. Different tests, different hospital appointments, um, coming up with various different overgrowth syndromes. For over a year, exhaustive tests and consultations failed to provide a definite answer as to what was wrong with Archie. Doctors had to rule out the more common overgrowth syndromes one by one, as Archie's symptoms just didn't seem to fit any. His head was abnormally large, with a prominent forehead, and for some strange reason he had a third nipple. He had trouble breathing, problems with his eyesight, and kept on growing at an unprecedented rate. By 18 months, he was over four and a half stone. And by Christmas 2003, five and a half. By now, he'd also developed a heart problem and was on drugs to control his heartbeat. And still, doctors were at a loss. All Archie's parents, Sarah and Nigel, were told was that they shouldn't count on Archie living for too long. Since he was a baby, Archie Thompson has put on as much as a pound a week, or a stone every four months. Now two and a half, Archie weighs six stone, as much as an 11-year-old. Your back. Back. Love. Your back goes. Goes. Doctors have struggled to explain this phenomenal weight gain. They knew that he must have some kind of genetic disorder, but had no idea which one. The only thing his parents, Sarah and Nigel, were told was that they shouldn't count on Archie surviving too long. Really? At the moment, there isn't a no medication that would switch off the weight gain in our present state of knowledge. And he has had very detailed tests and it hasn't given us a lead that would enable us to actually alter the pattern of weight gain. So in a sense, um, nobody knows how long he might last. I think that's true, yes. Sarah and Nigel struggle to make life as normal as possible for Archie, but each new day brings a new problem. Did you sleep well? Did you sleep well? He's too big to carry upstairs, 
so they have a specially designed six-foot square hydraulic cot installed in the living room. His waist is so large that he uses adult-sized nappies. He can't walk and he's too heavy for buggies. He needs a wheelchair and a van to get around. The equipment helps him cope with his weight. But what's far harder is explaining why he's so big in the first place. At least now it's accepted he has a genetic condition. Archie has a place in the local special school. He's the youngest child there by more than two years. Archie's got his hat on, hip, 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 hooray. Archie's got his hat on and he's coming out to play. Throughout his life, doctors have known Archie wasn't being overfed and had a normal appetite. This meant that whatever genetic disorder he had, it wasn't one making him put on weight because he was eating too much. So they searched for a condition that could cause overgrowth without overeating, and which could explain the other peculiarities they identified in Archie, such as his large head. The other conditions which were then raised were a simpson Delarby syndrome, which is known to produce overgrowth, can have a slightly unusual shaped, rather coarse features in the face and, and forehead, and they are known to have occasional rapid heart rate episodes, which had already happened to Archie. But a blood test ruled out simpson Galabi. Next, doctors considered an overgrowth syndrome known as Sotos, after the doctor who identified it. There's no test for Sotos. It's identified through characteristics like a big head and tall height. But Sotos doesn't make sufferers as obese as Archie. And as he kept on growing, it too had to be discounted. They ran through all the, the, the overgrowth syndromes from Simpson, Galapi, Sotos, Weavers, ruled them all out because they were saying Archie's too big for those overgrowth syndromes. There seemed to be no answers. And without any, Sarah and Nigel felt they had to prepare for the worst. But just as all hope seemed to be exhausted, Archie's case was discussed at a conference of leading experts on genetic diseases. And one of the scientists present, who'd never even met Archie, had a suggestion. Those in the audience who have seen similar cases before, who have read about them, more likely suddenly recall literally that perhaps it could be this condition, or it's most likely to be that condition. There's a little debate that goes on. It really is a case of who can come up with the best fit, and uh, the best fit seems to be the condition known as MOMO. MOMO stands for macrosomia, meaning big body, obesity, macrocephaly, meaning big head, and ocular or eye anomalies, the four key features of Archie's condition. It was first identified by doctors in Sao Paulo, Brazil in 1993. But little research has been done on the condition, largely because there have only ever been three other cases ever identified in the world. I was sitting in a room and I'd been given a, a name. It had a label. He had something. And then, stupidly at the time, I thought, I've got a diagnosis, I can find out more about it. We can get this fixed, we can get this treated. Little did I know then that nobody else in the UK has it. It can't be treated, and there isn't a fix. No one really knows what Archie's future holds. If his weight gain will slow down and stop, or if he'll keep on expanding until his heart gives out. Today, Archie is described as life limited, unlikely to live for long. Where's the pussy cat? Ready? His heartbeat could still race out of control. And there's the asthma. The weight of fat around his neck is pushing his airway closed. For all this, 
Sarah must give him eight different types of medicine a day. He's now on long-term heart medication. He's on blood pressure medication because he's so big. To anybody that's never ever seen Archie and they ask, what does he look like, etc., etc., the easiest way to, to, to describe him is um, if a bloke was 14 stone, three times that, he's going to be 42 stone. A 42 stone man, they don't find it that very easy to move. They get cramped, they get stiff, um, very out of breath, very hot, very sweaty. Um, that's Archie. People look at Archie and look at me. They just assume I eat and that he eats and he's an overweight baby. Should he be eating that? Should he be having that? Should he be on a diet? I went to go out one day, opened the door and there was a slimming product um, on my doorstep. And a note saying that they should invent it for babies. And it made me feel total crap that I hadn't been able to maybe put across that he's ill. Hey. He has a life-threatening condition. Get nice. Barely a week goes by without Nigel having to rush home from work to run Archie into hospital. Each time, he and Sarah fear Archie might die. Today it's happened because of a persistent chest infection that's getting worse and worse. Doctors have already prescribed powerful new asthma drugs to help keep Archie breathing. The medical teams help as much as they can. But with so little known about Momo, all they can do is try and deal with each problem as it happens. There's nothing they can do about the underlying cause. And bit by bit, Sarah is being worn down with knowing nothing of what the future holds for Archie. Yeah. On one hand, I've got people telling me, you can't take risks with Archie, he's an unknown entity, don't know what's going to happen, etc, etc. And then on the other hand, you've got people saying, oh, he's not seriously ill, is he? But you want to try and live in like that, it's not easy up every night watching him it's not right at Great Ormond Street Hospital in London Sarah has come to meet Dr Phil Beals the geneticist who first suggested Archie might have Momo she's looking for answers though Archie is not in the mood for a consultation Dr Beals has been keen to meet Archie as part of his research into overgrowth syndromes. He's trying to find answers as to how simple errors in genes turn out to be so devastating. Well, simplistically, the single simple genetic defect can have a knock-on effect that is amplified within various processes in the body. These can affect different systems in the body, which then end up with, say, in Archie's case, this propensity to put weight on, can end up affecting the eyes, can end up affecting growth. Do you want to look in my mouth? Yeah. No. Oh. Hey. Can I look in yours now? Hey. Yes? Let's have a look. Like Very little is known about Momo. Scientists haven't even found the gene that's malfunctioning. To help him do this, Dr Beals takes a mouth swab from a reluctant Archie but finding the critical defect in his DNA won't be easy. We can only really increase these probabilities of finding genes if we have a lot of families to work with. 
Unfortunately, in the case of Momo, with just three cases described in the world, were immediately very challenged. In the absence of many Momo cases, Dr. Beals is attempting to understand it better by comparing it to a similar condition he's investigating, known as bardet beadle syndrome, or BBS. Like Momo, BBS causes both obesity and eye problems. Nothing is known about Momo, so we can turn to some of the similar conditions, such as BBS, where a little bit more is known about the processes that are going wrong, and perhaps look at those same processes in children such as Archie, who we believe have Momo. Beals hopes one day to find the gene responsible for Momo. He's already found genes that cause BBS, which is the first step towards designing drugs to treat the condition. Ready? Ready. Such breakthroughs are a long way off, probably 10 or 20 years. Even without any hope of a cure, Sarah is determined to keep on fighting for Archie. When people tell me that he may not crawl, he may not stand, he may not do this, he may not do that, then that's like waving a, a red rag. Because through me and my kids, we got Archie crawling, we got him standing up. Archie is now on the verge of taking his first steps. But even if he does learn to walk, his legs may not support his weight properly and he might limp. A day out with friends makes reality hit home. They have a little girl who's also two years old. And Archie's excessive size is painfully apparent. Just meeting another two-year-old up against my brother, it's just like you don't really know because that was the first time me and my mum and my stepdad had found out what an actual two-year-old, an average two-year-old, would actually look like against my brother. How that bit? But a day like this is something Sarah thought she might never see. I suppose what hit me was the fact that I had my three kids there, my husband was there, they were all happy, they were trying to find this bloody kite. I was told he's life limited, he's an unknown entity, and take each day as it comes. And the fact that two and a half years later, on a grass bank, and he's old enough to realise that there's a kite flying with his sisters, with his dad, and he hasn't got a care in the world. Sarah doesn't know how many more days like this she can expect with Archie. But she's heard that there's a girl in Brazil who was one of the first cases of Momo ever identified and who is now 17 years old. Sarah's decided to go and meet her. What this girl and her family have gone through over the years could tell her what the future could hold for Archie. It's going to be hard with communication, but to see this lady's daughter can she do normal things at school? I don't know if she's got Archie's cardiac problems. Just to, to find out what I've got in store for me and just to give somebody else a hug. Have a really nice trip. I miss you. Be all right. I love you. It's the day of departure. Take and care. first, Archie has to go into a hospice. Nigel just can't cope with him on his own. Sarah's very nervous. She's never left England before or been separated from her family for such a long time. To, to be able to go over to Brazil and sit down and have a cup of tea with somebody that's got something in common with me. And I can't... Stop. Sorry. If I can go and the mum says to me, well, we've done this for the last 10 years, go home, don't worry, then I knew I was right. 
Sarah's hope is that if the Brazilian girl has survived having Momo, then maybe Archie can too. Sao Paulo, Brazil, a city of 19 million people, one of whom is thought to have the same rare genetic condition as Archie. His mother, Sarah, has come here in search of answers. Do Archie and the Brazilian girl really both have Momo syndrome? And if they do, can Sarah dare to hope that Archie will also survive? When I got to Brazil, my first thought, honestly, <coughs> very confused, very out of my depth. It was just a bustle, people everywhere, cars bipping. Something totally alien to what I'm used to. Sarah has to travel to a poor Sao Paulo suburb to meet the girl with Momo. She knows little about her, only that her name is Daniele Ferlan and she's 17. At Archie's age, she suffered from obesity and eye problems like he does, but Sarah has no idea what her condition is like now. Five minutes before I knew I was getting there, the nerves set in, it hit me. Um, this was a big thing for me. I was seeing another child with the same condition as Archie. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, at that moment, it was every emotion rolled into one. I just know right this moment in time, I want Nigel here. I'd like if Archie had been here, because he would have broke the ice for me. Um, I don't know. Let's see what this girl has had to put up with for the last 17 years. I don't know. I don't know. Just yards from Danielle's gate, Sarah almost loses her nerve. Hi. Hi. Hello. Do you have to be? Hello. Hi. It's a tense moment. Both mothers need to be sure that their children's condition is the same. If so, it will be the first time ever that mothers of children with Momo have met. And Sarah's desperate to know if Archie might live as long as Daniele. Daniele herself is so overcome by the situation, she's completely lost for words. There to support her is her school teacher, Katya now a great family friend. Sarah's first priority is to find out if Daniele, at the age of two, looked like Archie does now. Your daughter is basically the spitting image of, of Archie, just a lot older. Um, very similar. Very similar, just different colouring. Quite a shock to see. Can't get her, she's just gorgeous. Once she's reassured that both Archie and Daniele do indeed have Momo, Sarah can finally learn what the future might hold for Archie. É, que nem a Daniele, né? Ela nunca, ela sempre foi uma menina alegre, contente, é, sempre brincou, todo mundo ama ela, a família toda, né? E a única busca que eu busco é em Deus mesmo para poder eu saciar todo esse meu problema. Só que a Daniela em mim, ela não assim para ver médico essas coisas, eu quase não tenho problema nenhum, né? Então é só esse problema do peso dela 
e o problema da perna, porque o restante ela não me dá trabalho em nada. I've had... Quer mostrar pra ela essa daqui se pescando? Um, people telling me Archie's life limited. And me coming here to Brazil has proved what I thought all along. That Archie's fine and he's gonna be here and go to school and get married. Then play football with his dad. That's enough. Tem que acalmar, tem que manter a calma, né? Que é para poder não chegar na vitória. Porque sem isso a gente nada pode ser. The more they speak, the clearer it is that Momo hasn't destroyed Daniele's life. A Daniele nunca foi em nenhuma escola especiais, né? Nenhuma, ela sempre estudou na escola normal. E ela sempre se deu bem, ela sempre foi bem, ela grava muito bem as coisas, tudo, lê bastante. Então, escolas especiais ela nunca foi e ela sempre se deu bem com tudo. Daniele grew up in the poor town near São Paulo, where she lives now. Her weight gain has leveled off since she was a baby. At Archie's age, she also weighed about six stone, and she's developed into a happy and prospering teenager. Although she's heavy, she's not dangerously obese. Doctors in the town where she lives have always struggled to explain what's been wrong with her. For a long time, her mother, Prezeres, like Sarah, felt there were no answers. I never trusted scientific theories. To me, once I'd been to various doctors and their investigations hadn't got anywhere, the only thing to do was to put my trust in God and forget about science because in time something would be discovered. But I didn't know when or how. But in 1993, Daniele's case was referred to Professor Celia Koifman at the University of Sao Paulo. An expert on genetic disorders, Professor Koifman was to begin with flummoxed by what she saw. When Daniele first came, we measured Daniele, weighed her, looked at her characteristics, and when we compared her to other cases in the medical literature, her case did not correspond to any already recognized syndrome. And we felt that maybe it was a new syndrome. Examining Daniele, led the professor to propose Momo as a genetic condition in its own right. But having a hitherto unknown syndrome didn't stop Daniele growing up happy and relatively normal. Like most teenagers, she likes having her hair done, reading magazines and talking to friends. She's also very good at school and even hopes to go to university. Daniele has always been a happy, cheerful child. She's never been sad because of her condition. The only time she gets annoyed is if too many people are talking to her at the same time. That's when she starts to look cross. But soon enough she's laughing and joking again. I looked at photos of her growing up and Archie's age and her features... Um, not necessarily her eyes, etc., because she's had problems with her eyes, not even related to the to the Momo in the very beginning. But I just saw Archie, and that was enough for me. And to see that she's 17 years 17 years old, and she's enjoying music, and she's enjoying school, I didn't really need anything else. I just it was very emotional, very very emotional. <laughs> Back in England, things are just about carrying on as normal, without Mum. How much do you miss her? Lots. We all do. Well, hopefully, later on, mm -hmm. I will be speaking to Mummy on the phone. Headband. Where did the headband come from, Mo? My school. Your school? Is it yours? Yes, I left it at school. Oh, what, last week? Yeah. Oh. 
It's been a big day. It's just closure. It's just, for, for me, it's that black cloud that I've been carrying around with me is gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Good. It's, it's... Go on, carry on. Go on. <laughs> Are you relieved? Yeah, that's what it is. It's two years of relief. Uh-huh. I'm not sad. No. Um, I'm just, I've never been through the emotions I've been through today. Uh, are they good emotions? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's closure, it's balls to a lot of them, basically. Uh-huh. Uh, is, is she... How sort of, is she a big girl, or I mean... She's on the hefty side, she is big, but... Not, I don't know, perhaps I'm a biased person to look at her, but it's, I wouldn't have looked at her and said, wow. Mm -hmm. But she is big. Um, she's got the frontal boss in like Archie's head. Yeah. She's got the eye problem. She's got the bad gait, like Archie with his legs. Mm -hmm. Quite explain, but hers are a, a, more, a different, but you've got to realise she's 17, not two. Yeah, she can walk though, can she? Yes, yeah, she can. Uh huh. Um. Um. Nigel, I've got to go again. Okay. I've got real problems with my chest. Okay, okay, just take your time. All right. All right, All right sorry. Okay. At this point, Sarah collapsed, so we stopped filming. The following day, Sarah felt well enough to go with Prezeras to meet Professor Koifman, the scientist who first identified Momo. The professor's pleased to meet her. Hearing about Archie helps confirm her diagnosis of Danielli all those years ago. Her big hope now is that Momo can become more widely recognised by doctors, who then be able to spot any other cases they come across. To me, it looks like Archie has the same syndrome as Daniele has. I was happy because now we can be sure that Daniele really has a new type of syndrome. It's good for Sarah, Archie's mother, who now understands what her son suffers from and has a diagnosis for her son. Daniele and her mother Prezeres have been happy to share their experiences with Sarah. And now they have asked her to accompany them to church to cement the bond between them. family asked if I would go to church and I more than readily accepted. I was very religious when I was younger but I lost a faith if you want to call it through the years but I believe there's something out there. If there was a God then why did that why would they do this to anybody? Not only Archie. And I just feel that somebody wanted us to have Archie. I felt I was sitting in a room with at least four people that knew what I was feeling, where I've never had that before. I felt I belonged. I can go home. And yeah, okay, Archie has Momo syndrome, but at the end of the day, what does that mean? It's a label. And um, I can picture him at his 18th birthday party. Sarah has got what she came for. 
the belief that Archie has a future. Tomorrow she'll go home to England with this newfound hope. Her family can't wait to see her. Sarah has returned to England with the answer she was seeking, that Archie does have a future worth fighting for. Home, sweet home and not a skyscraper in sight. <laughs> Sarah's news has already got back to Dr Beals. For him, it's a breakthrough. With only two other cases before Archie, the corroboration of his diagnosis not only helps Momo become more widely recognised, but gives doctors more to work with in trying to understand it. I have to say that I'm uh, relieved because it helps us in a way to confirm our suspicions. And I would say that there are certain uh, quite gross facial similarities, not just the, the weight itself and the general stature, which is similar, um, but there are features such as the ridge across the uh, uh, top of the nose, for example, uh, the shape of the eyes, the shape of the mouth that's down slanting. Um, these are all features that we see in Archie. Dr Beals is still studying the chemical processes that go wrong in overgrowth syndromes. Understanding these, he believes, might not only help those who suffer from genetic conditions, but everyone. Because he thinks that the processes which cause runaway obesity like Archie's may be related to what happens in apparently normal people who put on weight too readily. What we need to try and unravel is the processes that are leading to his weight gain. If we can understand those at the chemical level, for example, then perhaps we can begin to understand what's happening not quite to the same degree, with the same veracity, but in a lesser way in the general population. He's more optimistic that Archie stands a good chance of reaching adulthood like Danny Ellie. I think with um, careful management, I think that the outlook is very good for Archie. going to do now is my first sentence to everybody new I ever meet that doesn't know Archie I'm not going to say he has a rare overgrowth syndrome High five. Yeah. because they don't need to know that they just need to see the person Kiss ten. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Baba. This one. I need to get up right Not going away again. I haven't had a decent cup of tea in a week. Nigel is also relieved that the dark cloud over the family seems to have lifted. I feel it will give Sarah a lot of hope knowing that. Another sufferer is to live. Where there's life in Archie, there is always hope. And we'll do anything and everything for him. We don't know how long we've got Archie for, but it does give us hope that Archie will be here for many years to come. No one really knows for sure how long Archie will live, but now at least the family has cause for hope. You don't know how long he's going to live or anything or how he's going to be, so I think he's the most precious in my life at the moment. And probably if he, if he lives, like, up to 30 or something, he'll be, like, the most precious in, my, in the whole of my life forever. Sarah has only ever wanted a happy family life. Now, with the hope that in time, Archie's growth will slow down, she has the confidence to believe it might just happen. I want Archie to learn to 
grab life. I want Archie to learn, to achieve, to his ability, to make him happy. Not to make me happy, not to make Nigel happy, but to make himself happy. I don't want him ever to be ashamed. I don't want him to feel he's disappointed anybody in any way. Basically, I'll go back to what I say every single time. If he can smile at one person one day, every day, then it hasn't cost a penny. And I, I know he's happy. It's just a mess. Just don't take things for granted. And take life by the horns and just bloody live it, really.